my name is Thomas. I'm a developer. Uh, yeah, mostly developer, not that much tester, I'm afraid. Uh, I'll be talking about something called uh, the four rules of simple design, and I'll combine it together with Selenium. Uh, and during my session, I will use a network, and you want to put your devices so you don't use the network, because otherwise my test will be very slow and will be very boring for all of us. Very boring. So please, do not use the network during the test at least, and if you can avoid it during the session, do so. Right. So, Selenium and the four rules of simple design. What's that? Well, let's start with asking ourselves which rules and why do these rules matter? So, these rules are defined or suggested, perhaps, by Kent Beck in a great book he wrote late 90s, 99, I think the first edition came up with the Extreme Programming Explained. So, this is uh, his suggestion of how you should try to write code. Uh, they're quite simple. Ex tests passes. Well, that's nice. It's very important that you express intent, so it's clear what you actually mean and not lie within the code. It's also important that you don't have any duplication. And finally, it's very important that whatever it is we're working with is small, whatever small happens to mean. That, means, that could mean small methods, small classes, small modules, whatever, but small, because it's hard to understand if it's large. As easy as that. Um, and it's very interesting that he changed the order of these rules in the second edition. So all of a sudden, the order of duplication and express intent doesn't really matter that much. But what does this mean? Test passes. Well, the very simple answer to that is there must be tests. Unit tests or whatever kind of tests. But it's really important that we have tests. And in my book, that's usually unit tests, but it could also be end-to-end -end testing. But that's very important that we have anything like that. Uh, how does this connect into Selenium then? Well, if we are writing test code, then we might not write tests for the test code. That could happen. But there are definitely cases where we should. I think we're all aware of the concept of time. But how many of you are aware of how complicated it is, it is? Handing time zones, daylight savings. We are, for example, changing between daylight saving at between 3 and 4 in the uh, Central European time zone, but we are changing between 1 and 2 in GMT. Just an example to make things complicated. How do we know which is the last weekday of the upcoming month? Well we write some utility method. That one definitely needs tests. How do we know if a date is the next Saturday or which date is upcoming Saturday? These are things that may or may not be very important, but if they are important, then I think that it's a good idea to write tests, unit tests for these utility methods, even if they're part of a, of a test code, code base. So yes, we do have tests testing the tests. Sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Express intent. What do we mean by that then? Well, simply, it's very easy to understand what we actually mean and do. Could anyone tell me what this one is doing? No, you can't. And now? Can you tell me now what it's doing? Well, we seem to have two, two accounts involved and some kind of number. We're adding something to one of them and we're subtracting from the other one. That could be a transfer. But it's not really clear. Write like this instead. And an idiot would understand it. So, this is the way to write stuff. You have a much better name, transfer funds. Okay, I can understand what that means without looking into the method. If I need the details, I can look into the method, but I can understand it just by looking at the name. 
So this is a quote with, that I've uh, borrowed from Jason Gorman. The best code clearly tells the story what the code does. The upper one, almost impossible to understand. The lower, the, the lower one, easier. So naming, clear intent, very, very important. Duplication. It happens that people copy and paste a lot of code. That's very easy to find because you can see the same lines in two places. Uh, duplication can also mean duplicate concepts, that you have the same type of concept at two places. That should be one. Duplicate concepts are harder to find, but they might, you might do that, and that's a duplication as well. It's very easy to find copy and paste the code. So don't do that. Avoid duplication. Remove duplication whenever you can. And the question is, should you remove every possible duplication? It depends. It depends a lot. Um, but if the duplication makes it harder to understand, then you might not, you might be able to, you, might, you should perhaps save the duplication because clear intent is very, very important. And perhaps sometimes, and it all depends, more important than duplication. So if I have to choose from something that is hard to understand and something that is, contains duplications, I would probably prefer the duplication. Uh, but if you need a rule, there is something called the rule of three. Remove duplication the third time you see it. And I will not do that in my example because my example would be too long then. But it's well, it's it's a good idea. And if you want to read more about it, Adebol Buka wrote a great blog post not too long ago about that. Okay, what's small then? Any ideas? Well, it all depends. I'm a Java developer. I think that uh, my concept of small is larger than uh, a small talk developer, for example. The uh, ideal in small talk is, was supposed to be three lines per, co per, per method. Java methods are often a little bit longer than that. So it depends. Always on the context. But one thing that is very interesting is, do we have one uh, single responsibility or not? If, it's, if it has two responsibilities, break it. It's probably too large. Do you have one level of abstraction or many level of abstractions in a method? Well, if you do, break it. Make sure that you have the same level of abstraction everywhere. And it's very important to realize that you can't apply these rules once. You have to iterate over them all the time. So fixing a name may uncover something interesting. When you remove some duplication, you might understand that you could express yourself in a clearer way, and so forth. So you would want to iterate back and forth many times. How many? Can't say. That's up to your experience. And what do you think is a maintainable and understandable code base? That's what it's all about. And once again, the order is not important between clear intent and du no, du no duplication. And if you're interested in reading more about that, then uh, J.B. Reinsberg wrote a great blog post about that a couple of years ago that I can recommend. Right. So, I'm a developer, I like code. So let's dig into some code. So I'm gonna keep these as a reminder if I wanna go back and forth. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't run over time by starting a timer. And now is a good idea to uh, go offline if you haven't done it yet, because I will start with running the tests. No, I will not start with running the test. I will start with looking at this test class. It's kind of small, isn't it? You can probably even understand what it does. 
I'm supposed to buy geeky stuff, and I need a flux capacitor. I think everyone needs a flux capacitor. Is everyone familiar with the movie Back to the Future? Yeah, yeah. then you know that you need a flux capacitor. Um, how many in here is knows about uh, about uh, Doctor Who? Yeah, then you need you know that we need a sonic screwdriver. So that's stuff that we're gonna buy. Um, and you can do that from a site called uh, Geeky Stuff or Think Geek. I don't even remember. And I'm not associated with them in any way, but uh, I decided that it was a good example to uh, test against. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so we found Doctor Who, and we found a sonic screwdriver, and we put him in, in a shopping bag. And we found our flux capacitor. Okay. I did not expect to change screen like that, but it happened. Um, oh, and I don't even see how long time the execution took. That was bad. I would like to do that. Exit presentation mode. Can I see that? Yes, I can see that. It took 42 seconds, but now I don't expect you to be able to see the code, are you? No. Uh, that was not too good. So let's go back here. Right, so the first criteria, small, that's kind of uh, fulfilled. Uh, sorry, the first criteria of the test passes, that's fulfilled. Small, yes. Express intent, mm, maybe. No duplication, no. Okay, so this is perfect. Although, I think the interesting things are happening in this method, so let's take a look at it here. And all of a sudden we have lots of stuff here that may or may not be great. Is this easy to read? I don't know. Depends on your background. For me, sort of, I wrote it. Basically, I guess that's the reason why I think I know what's happening here. Um, so, let's see, where can we start? Um, let's go back to the test. There is one thing I actually hate in test classes, and that's the habit of inheriting functionality. Because that's a great way to hide functionality. I'm not always sure where it ends up. This could be the first part of a long, long chain of different classes where we inherit stuff. So I'm going to remove that. But before I do that, I want to make sure that this all works. So let me start with doing this instead. And in a setup method before, let me create that one there. Like this, almost. Okay, it's not being used. Let's make sure that we use it. Okay, now I should be able to get rid of the inheritance. Let's try. And let me just try to compile it and see if it compiles. Yes, it did. Um, I would want to run this, but it took like 40 seconds last time. Let's do it once and see what happens. And why are it we changing screen? I don't know.
So the test passed, passed. The first test passed at least. Ah, and we're waiting for something that I don't even know what it is, but it takes forever to wait for it sometimes. Right, this is the problem of using uh, someone else's web application that you don't have control over, live in front of, I don't know, 200 persons. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we can wait forever here, unfortunately. And this did not happen that often yesterday. It ha did happen a few times, but not that often. So I'm going to kill this one and hope that it actually should have worked. But we know that uh, the helper method did work because the first test passed. So let's assume that it actually works. Um, right. So I removed or I didn't remove. I inc increased clarity bec uh, by removing inheritance. So I'm going to commit this. And by the way, if you're interested in this example, it will be available on GitHub afterwards. Um, so, express intent, removed, inherited, no, nope, not spelled like that, is it? Don't think so. Uh, functionality. Okay. What else could we do? Well, it's very clear, uh, it's very important that we actually do what the uh, test says, that the test says what we actually do. So take a look at this one, buy the back to the future flux capacity. Is this one actually buying or is it doing something else? Let's take a look. Uh, we go somewhere, we do something, we wait, we add it to a shopping cart, wait until we can find it, we assert that it's in the shopping cart. I'm actually sure that we don't buy anything here. Which means that this method has a name that is lying. Um, I could run this in debug mode and see what the, uh, what the browser looks like when we entered line 42. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say that this one is lying and it doesn't uh, doesn't do a buy a purchase it just adds it to some kind of uh, shopping cart so a better name is add flux capacitor to cart something like that and the thing here is that oh this one is does the same thing it navigates, finds an, uh, an item, plays it in the shopping cart. So it doesn't buy anything either. So let's call this one add sonic screw driver driver o driver to cart. Add sonic screwdriver to cart. Yeah, that's better. Okay, but if we look at the test class now, what does this one say? Should buy flux capacitor. And that's not correct, is it? So what we actually are doing is adding it to shopping cart. So let's rename this one as well. Uh, capacitor should be a capital C. Should add flux capacitor to cart. Like that. 
And this one is similar. Should add Doctor Who Sonic Driver screwdriver to cart. Hmm? Perhaps not great, but it's good enough. So we had clarity here, or express intent. We shouldn't lie. Code should not lie, and we shouldn't lie either. That is, in a sense, a side note, but uh, no, you should not lie if you can avoid it. Express intent. Uh, describe what the method actually does. Methods. Describe. Something like that? No? It's hard with spelling. Okay. So, I just updated the names here a little bit. Mm? Do we have anything more that we could fix or think of? Well, let's take a look here. This helper class is deciding which browser we should use. Is that a good place to do this? Don't think so. Uh, it's probably better if the test supplies this class, this helper, with the browser. So let's prepare for that. Uh, something like this, perhaps. And if we make sure that we can get this through the constructor, then I think that would be good. Because then we could use that one there instead. OK. But this means that the test needs to create a browser. OK. So let's do that. Web driver. New Firefox driver, like that. And yeah, let's import that one and let's add it to the co method called there, or the constructor. Okay, will this compile? I hope so. Um, yeah, it did, as far as can, I can tell. The presentation mode is not great because I can't actually see the uh, some messages that I'm expecting. So I'm going to exit it and I'm going to press. I'm going to compile it and all files are up to date moments ago. Okay, we don't have a compiler problem. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, right. Do we have anything else that we would like to fix at the moment? No, not really. I'm uh, supplying the helper class with the browser instead, so the test can vary it. It doesn't vary it at the moment. Mm, I think that's good enough. Let's commit this and see what if there's anything else that we can do. Uh, express intent. Is that... Mm, I'm not sure. Uh. The helper class should not uh, create the browser. Okay. Oh, I have a warning. What's the problem? Unused import statements. Is this important? Yes, it is. Because it creates a lot of uh, dis disruptions. So let's see if I can remove that. There we go. By reformatting my code, I was able to, to remove the, <coughs> the unused import. And now, IDA is happy. Right. Um, okay. This one is killing the driver when it's done. Is this a good place to do it? No, don't think so. So let's not to do that here. Let's remove that. 
And let's remove it here as well. Okay. Um, but this means that we have to do it somewhere else. And I'm going to do that in the test. And I'm going to do that in an after section or after method that will be executed after each test has been executed. Uh, and it should be a public void uh, method let's, that I will call tear down. And it should basically kill the driver, but the driver is not accessible here. I think I will have to make that one private instead. So I can access it somewhere. And I want to do a quit. Right. This means that when we have executed the test, we will kill the driver and it will be done here. Mm. Is driver a good name? No. It's actually a horrible name. I'm going to do two things at the same here. I'm going to call this browser. Because it is a browser, it's not a driver. Or perhaps it's both. But in my uh, abstraction, I'm more interested in talking about the browser than some kind of driver. Driver is a technical term. I'm interested in the uh, business term instead. Um, and I think that I should rename it in the helper class as well. Yeah, let's do that. Let's call this one browser instead. And let's rename this, this parameter as well. So all of a sudden, we're not talking about the driver, we're talking about the browser, which is what the customers are talking about. OK, I didn't really enjoy doing two things at the same time, but I did. Uh, so what did I do? I moved the responsibility of killing the browser to the test. Killing the browser to the test. And I can't spell. And I also renamed it. Renamed driver to browser. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is shrinking somewhat. This one is growing a little bit. But they are still, in a sense, not that large. At least not the test. Uh, do we have anything else that we can do here? Oh, lots of things. <coughs> um, Looking at this code, I can see that we are verifying the uh, shopping cart and we're looking for a partial link text that is a sonic screwdriver and it's a flux capacitor here. This is a duplication. We could probably, oh, we could probably remove a duplication from um, Let's see. Uh, perhaps here. That's pretty much the same thing in both methods. There's one difference, though. We have a parameter here that is different. But if I extract this one, link text. Oh. That was a really bad suggestion for a variable name, wasn't it? Um, uh, but perhaps partial product name, name, partial product name would be better. 
and if I do that and then I move that one up a little bit something like that and I do the same thing here and it's also partial product name uh, and where did I put it here I put it over cart table there so by preparing like this, I should be able to extract a method from there to there. And with some luck, my editor will recognize that I have duplicated code and help me with that. Let's see if it's able to do that. What am I doing here? I'm basically asserting that we found a product in a cart, shopping cart. So let's call this assert a third cart. Oh, there's a duplication here. How interesting. So I was able to extract this method that is the same in both methods, or the same in both methods. And all of a sudden, we this one decreased a little bit and I was able to remove, uh, I don't know, like 11, 50 lines, ah, 11, 10 lines of, uh, of code, something. Not too bad. So the difference is, if we just take a look at it, that this is removed and replaced by this instead. Okay. Right, so I think we can commit this one. Mm. And say that we uh, did not express intent this time, but we removed the application. Uh, removed, common, ah, not removed, extracted. Extracted, common, logic for asserting the cart. Okay. Right, do we have anything else we can do that is a good idea to do? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do here and I'm wondering how I'm doing on time. Not too good, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to skip forward a little bit. It's very easy, at least for me, to see that it could be a good idea to uh, extract a page object here. This is a method that would be nice to have in a page object. A page object that is interacting with the cart and only the cart. So I'm going to add a method and use, use that one. Uh, sorry, I'm going to add a class and use that one instead. Java class that I call cart page. I'm not sure if this is the best name in the world, but I'm going to stick to it at the moment. The thing is that I can always refactor. I can always change name to a better name. So I'll start here and uh, we'll see what happens. And let's see now. Let's copy that part and then paste it into this method. Mm. Okay, so this one needs a browser and it also needs to be public so I can access it from other places. And a browser is a web driver that is called a browser. And I would like to get it from in the constructor to this one, like that. So this means that I can create the card page somewhere and use it. 
I can create it in the test or I can could create it in the helper class that I'm actually working on. I'm going to start easy and I'm going to add it to the helper class. Think keep help, helper. Um, okay. So this means that I need access to uh, uh, to a card page like that. It also means that I need to create it somewhere, and I'm going to do that in the constructor. And it needs a browser. Okay. A third cart should now be able to use the one in the cart page and the one in the cart page, like that. And all of a sudden, this one is not used, so I can remove it. Um, we haven't tested it for a long time. Should we test it? No. Okay. But it's fun to test. Okay. It will take 40 seconds. Let's not do it. Let's commit this one and hope that it works. Um, I would not do this if... Uh, I mean, I would run the tests if I wasn't in front of 200 persons and you want to see some action instead of a boring test. Duplication. Mm, is it duplication this time? I'm not sure. Um, let's use express intent. It really doesn't matter if it's duplication or, or, or clarity. The thing is that we're refactoring this to something that is hopefully easier to understand and maintain. That's the purpose of everything. So that's what I'm doing. Express intent. So we extracted, extracted a cart page to handle the interaction with the shopping cart. Um, X, no, oh. extracted. It's important to spell properly, and I can't, so I always use the speller in, in idea. Okay, there are some kind of problems here. Some kinds contains problems. Two, five warnings found. What warnings? Show me the warnings. Unused import statements. Oh, okay. Am I? Do I have unused import statements here? Yes, I think I had. It's easy to see when you're not in the presentation mode. And there we go. And that's another thing that is actually very important and that I thought of when we saw the previous presentation that Dima had. Um, he compiled the Selenium grid. Did you notice how many warnings there were? I wouldn't dream of committing stuff that had so, so many warnings. And the reason for that is some warnings are actually important. I don't want the, the important warnings to get drowned among all the unimportant warnings. Therefore, no warnings. Never. But I assume that you don't do that either. Right. Uh, so we extracted the page object. What else can we do here? And how am I doing on time? We got eight minutes left. Um, hmm? Shouldn't we rename the test class? Why should we rename the test class? Ah, it says buy. That's not a good name, is it? Well, I'm not sure if you heard it, but there is a su suggestion here. Shouldn't we rename this test class? And of course we should. Don't lie. 
Don't lie in code. Add geek stuff to cart test. I need the name test here because Maven, the, the uh, test runner in Maven is able to pick it up if it's called test. If I call it something else, foo or whatever, Maven, the Maven test runner is not able to pick it up. So therefore I need the technical word test here. I would rather prefer a specification or something like that, but that's another issue. Uh, right. No, yeah, this is the change, and I'll just commit that one. Express intent. Uh, don't lie. Call the class. Uh, no. The class should tell what it it tries to do. I don't know. Perhaps. Mm. Okay. So, do we have anything more that we can do? Well, we have lots of more stuff that we could do here. I would, if I had time, I would extract uh, lots of stuff. I would extract this to some kind of page object. I would extract this to something that uh, interacted and added it to, uh, to uh, the cart. Perhaps that part, I'm not sure at the moment. I clearly see a duplication here. That one is duplicated. Um, this is strange. I wonder why I do this. I would break this out to, to something else that was able to navigate and then challenge it. Is this actually correct? Why are you doing this? I'm doing it because there's a pop-up on the site, and uh, I don't want to. Add, I didn't want to add logic to uh, get rid of that pop-up when it shows up. But those are things that uh, can be handled in another page object. So I see uh, two or three page ob objects here. Um, I'm not going to extract them at the moment. Do I see any more? I see that uh, using these these page objects would remove the Think Geek Helper object entirely, but that would take me 20 minutes, half an hour to do, and we don't have that time. So I'm going to stop this this uh, example here and continue with the, my presentation. So what we have seen is some refactoring where I have tried to think about these rules and we did remove some inheritance, introduced some collaborators, removed duplication, decreased method and class sizes a little bit. We did increase another class. Was that a problem? Mm, hopefully not. And that was my cue for not continuing with the example. So the thing here is that we have these rules and we should iterate over them. Rinse and repeat. Do it once again, and then once again, and then once again. And this is perhaps a new silver bullet, but it's not, because there are no silver bullets. This is a good way to do stuff. I think it's very good. I enjoy doing it. Other people may think otherwise. Um, there is one quote that is very, very important to think about. And I don't know if you know about a guy called Bob Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. He claims in the Clean Code book, which I can recommend to anyone, that always leave the code in a better shape than you found it. If you do that, just one tiny little, little change to the better, then the world will be a better place to live in and the code will be easier to understand. So if you just change the variable name to something that is better, well, do that. If that's the only change you do this day, it was a change for the better. So always do that. So always leave the code in a better shape than you found it.
And this source code is available at GitHub. Not yet, I haven't pushed it, but I'm going to do that in, within a few minutes. And I want to thank my good friend, Yuan, who was a sounding board in this case. He's a tester, and I think he's off skiing today. Bummer. Right, I'm Thomas. I've been talking about Selenium and the four rules of simple design. Thank you very much for listening.